This is part two of a multi-part series on how to paint your firearm or paint parts of your firearm. And in this episode, I'm going to discuss uh, some materials that you're going to need for painting as well as for prep work. So starting off with uh, prep work, um, let's talk about safety. Safety, safety, safety. Paint, as well as the um, paint thinner, lacquer uh, reducer, uh, or enamel reducer, lacquer cleaner, um, goof off, which you see here in the yellow can. Um, any of these types of paint cleaners are harsh chemicals, and they can be absorbed through your skin or breathed in and absorbed through your 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 lungs so two things we want to do is keep this stuff off of our skin and keep it out of our lungs uh, you want to stay healthy um, you know if you're gonna do any type of painting over a, a long period of time obviously professionals know all of this but for us people doing it at home we have certain amounts of uh, precautions we need to take. So first off, um, back here, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. This is not a paint mask. I can't stress this hard enough. I see people selling paint kits and they include these and people using these. This is, this is a dust mask. This doesn't keep fumes or small paint particles out of your lungs. Okay. This, if you're, if you're if you got a, a broom and you're you're sweeping up your garage, yeah, this this is a good thing. Or if you're you're dealing with something with large particles like um, fiberglass, okay, fine, great. Th but this is not for painting, and this does nothing for for uh, vapors. So don't rely on this to protect your your lungs. What you want is you want something like this. This is a full face respirator that has replaceable filters. It has uh, pre-filters as well as uh, charcoal type uh, vapor filters. So not only does this filter out paint particles, but it filters out the vapors that are given off by uh, you know, enamel reducer and goof off and, and, and those other things. Um, if you're working with those types of chemicals in a closed environment, it can be uh, dangerous um, if you don't have adequate fresh air uh, around you. So these are going to cost you a little bit more money. You're going to spend 20 to $40 for one of these, and it'll come with a set of filters. The filters need to be replaced uh, periodically, depending upon how much they're used and exposed to the air. Normally, these ship in some sort of a uh, resealable bag, so you can put them back in the bag and seal them uh, and keep uh, uh, extend the life of them. So... That's something to keep in mind. I'm not going to mention any particular brands. Uh, go to an auto parts paint store. Look at what they have. Any place that, that sells uh, paint, you're going to find respirators like this. They, they, they may look a little bit different, but it's a full face respirator. So that's number one priority is, is uh, protect your lungs from uh, the paint particles as well as the fumes. Number two, protect your hands. Um, I can't tell you how many videos I see people getting stuff all over their hands and I guess they don't care or they don't realize that these chemicals can be absorbed through your skin. So first off, latex gloves. Buy a box of them, you're going to be using a lot of them. If you're allergic to latex, you can get uh, alternates that are uh, latex free. Uh, I use these all the time. Uh, with everything that I'm doing. Now, the caveat here, these light latex gloves can be easily dissolved by goof off, enamel reducer, lacquer thinner. These are not chemical resistant. These protect your hands from, for example, paint. If you're spray painting something and you're holding something, keep the paint off your hands. Dirt, grease, grime, uh, that sort of thing. I use these when I'm prepping a surface. So, for example, um, 
let's just assume let's just assume this little plastic uh, item here I'm going to paint. You see right now I'm holding it with my fingers. Once I start prepping this, I will never touch it again with my fingers uh, until I'm completely done with it. So if I'm going to start prepping it, let's say I'm going to hit it with the wax and grease remover and then I'm going to sand it um, and then put adhesion promoter on. Before I start, I'm going to wear these uh, latex gloves. I'm going to put the latex gloves on, then I'm going to start handling this. From that point forward, my bare fingers will never touch, touch this until I'm completely done with it. So why is that? Your fingers have oil on them and other contaminants. You do not want that on a freshly cleaned and prepped surface. It will cause problems with your paint. So that's where these uh, inexpensive latex gloves uh, come into play. So I also use those when I'm, uh, my, I'm wet sanding as well, any anytime I'm actually handling this. Um, so Now, if I'm using a, for example, a wax and grease remover, if I'm using goof off or paint thinner or turpentine, any type of harsh chemical, um, I'm going to use these gloves. These are a 3M. These are a heavy duty chemical resistant glove. They're resistant to goof off, gasoline, paint thinner, enamel. They will keep the harsh chemicals off your skin. Um, these are not what I would consider disposable. These are, are more, way more expensive than the disposable gloves. You can reuse these. You can see I've got I've even got some paint on the fingers here. So uh, you keep these clean. Uh, use them when you're dealing with the hardcore chemicals. Yeah, I don't have a particular. Yeah, I don't. There's no name on these. I believe they were 3M. Uh, paint supply stores, Home Depot, Lowe's. They sell stuff like that. So you're gonna end up with two sets of gloves for for do two different types of purposes. Okay. Um, I have a Ziploc plastic bag here. So why do I have a Ziploc plastic bag? Well, if I'm prepping this, let's say this, this um, I'm going to hit it with the uh, wax and grease remover and then I'm going to um, wet sand it and we'll get to sanding in a moment. When I'm done with it, let's say if I'm not ready to uh, put the adhesion promoter on or to paint it, I'm going to store it in a clean plastic bag. So when I'm done with it, I'm going to put it in this baggie. I'm not going to leave this laying around where dust can get on it or any other type of contaminants. I'm going to put it in a little baggie uh, until I'm ready to take it out again. Now with the baggie, I don't need to have gloves on to handle this, but if I'm taking it out, I'm going to have my latex gloves on. That way I keep any type of contaminants off of the surface. That's why this is here. Okay, so wax and grease remover, adhesion promoter. Now, let's say before I do the adhesion promoter, I'm going to sand this. Uh, I'm going to use some sandpaper. This is just a little piece of, of uh, some 3M paper. Um, I'm going to use um, a wet dry paper. Uh, normally the black stuff is, is stuff you can do uh, in the water. You can get it wet. I prefer the 3M and I will use probably the heaviest I will use is a 400 and the lightest would be a 600 grit paper. So this is the type of paper I would use to prep this surface if I was going to sand it and I would wet sand this and the difference between wet sanding and dry sanding when you dry sand something you use up the paper much quicker with, with the re residue that you sand off your item. It clogs up the paper, so you've got to change the paper more often. When you're wet sanding, all those contaminants get washed away. So when I'm wet sanding, I may take this uh, into my home, into my kitchen, and I'll put it underneath the sink and I'll run water on it while I sand it. And what we're trying to do with, with wet sanding or any type of sanding is we're trying to rough up this surface. We're trying to prep the surface so the paint 
can adhere to it better. So we're not trying to, you know, for the most part, we're not trying to sand off anything. But since this is plastic, if there was a burr or something on it, we could use the sandpaper to smooth out a burr to make it nice and smooth. But in general, if you're dealing with a pistol grip or a, a handguard or, or a stock or something like that, you're just going to be roughing up the surface uh, and you're going to want to rough up everything. So um, again, I see people using um, uh, Scotch-Brite pads and things of that nature. Um, those are just not appropriate for this type of use. I mean, they'll get the job done, but they're, they're, the grit of those things are too heavy. They're not flexible. Like with a Scotch-Brite pad, how, how, how do you think you, you're going to be able to get into the small little recesses right there with a Scotch-Brite pad? No, you can't. I mean, if you're doing this top flat surface, a Scotch-Brite pad will be fine. This is where a small piece of this wet dry paper comes in handy. You fold it in half and you can you can get an edge on this and you can get right up in there. You can get that surface and you can sand it. So, you know, these comes in uh, wet the wet dry paper comes in like full 8 and a half by 11 or roughly some size like that, full sheets. And you can tear off a section and you can fold it up and you can manipulate it. I mean, you could you could wrap it around this pen if you were wanted to do an inside rounded surface. So, you, you know, there's, there's lots of things you can do by ripping off a small piece of it. And in combination with wet sanding, your sanding goes much faster. All the residual material that you sand off gets washed away and your paper lasts longer. So that's uh, just a quickie on sandpaper how to store the piece that you're working on. Now, in the previous video, I talked about the Preval sprayer. So if you're, if you're gonna shoot an automotive paint that requires a hardener or you know, a Duracoat or Cerakote, you're, you're gonna need a mixing container. And the jar that comes with the Preval is fine for the mixing container, but you're, you're also going to need uh, tablespoon and teaspoon um, measuring devices and these are primarily used for measuring the hardener that you need to add to your paint. So uh, the bottle itself has um, measuring marks on it which you can use to measure the amount of paint you put in the bottle and then you use the tablespoon or the teaspoon to measure the amount of hardener and you want to stick to that as accurately as possible. So get yourself some of these these are going to be a permanent addition to your painting supplies um, if you keep them clean you can reuse them uh, but you're probably not going to want to reuse these for food going forward after you use them so don't steal them from your wife now when uh, let's see when we're we've got our surface prepped and we're getting ready to paint um, you're going to be probably masking something off. There's going to be something you don't want to paint on this item, whether it's a contact surface, maybe a pistol with a pistol grip, the contact surface that comes in contact with your lower receiver, mainly because anytime you add paint to those areas, it makes those areas even tighter, so they may not fit well. And if they're really tight fitting and you've got a hard metal object rubbing against your painted surface you're going to scrape the paint off so rather than complicate things down the road for you you may want to mask off those types of areas so you don't get paint on those and you're going to want to use the best quality masking tape that you can get you want tape that's going to adhere and keep the paint from seeping underneath it and you're going to want a tape that removes easily and can withstand uh, a temperature variance if you're, you know, uh, uh, heating using heat to, to cure your paint. The you can find good quality masking tape at um, Home Depot and Lowe's um, and as well as automotive paint supply stores. 
Now I use uh, blue painters tape. This is a 3M tape. Um, it's used um, in a lot of different environments for painting. I mean if you were masking off trim in your house to paint this works great for that because it won't lift up paint. Uh, if you're masking off trim on a car this works great. I mean it's just an all-around versatile excellent masking tape and I use this pretty exclusively. Now there's other tapes out there in the automotive uh, paint supply stores that's not that are not blue. There's kind of a yellowish color and there's a red and um, different there's different colors out there. So if you go to an automotive paint supply store they're 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 going to have very specific paints or very specific tapes for for dealing with paint and painting in automobile environments and that's good just don't go down to your local grocery store and buy any old masking tape like white masking tape I mean if it's not painters tape don't don't use it for this purpose I like this I use this for uh, painting I use it for protection you've seen me use this when I'm building lower receivers I use it to protect the surfaces um, it's it's all around versatile it doesn't leave adhesive residue behind it doesn't peel up old paint and so on and so on so it's good stuff and it's available in different widths um, this I believe is one inch you can get it in thicker widths as well um, if you do enough painting you're going to get paint on surfaces that you don't want it. Um, you may get overspray um, on something. You may need to clean a brush. Maybe you, you use a brush to uh, touch up uh, something. Um, you're you're going to need something to deal with uh, paint residue. Now, lacquer thinner is something that works with lacquer. Uh, Krylon is, is an enamel paint, so if, if you were to clean up after Krylon, you'd want uh, an enamel uh, uh, reducer or an enamel thinner. Um, not all of these products are compatible with all the different types of paint. Um, a lot of paint thinners, you see something labeled paint thinner, is kind of designed for latex type paints, or some of them are. You have to be very careful about what thinner or reducer you use and, and match it up with the paint you're using. So going back to Krylon, Krylon is an enamel. I would want something that would deal with enamel paint. So I would want uh, an enamel reducer. Um, now in my case, I, I use uh, Goof Off here. Uh, Goof Off is a well, it removes everything. If you're not careful, it'll remove the skin off your hand as well. Um, if you're using Goof Off, you want to use the green 3M gloves like I uh, uh, showed you earlier. You also want to make sure that you're not breathing in those fumes off the Goof Off because the fumes will knock you, off, knock you out if you're not careful. It's heavy-duty stuff. Um, it'll take You could take a painted surface and rub Goof Off on and it'll remove the paint off a painted surface. So. To me, it's an all-around good remover. It works on enamel, it works on latex, it works on lacquer. That's what I use. Um, you can use it for remove, removing adhesive. Uh, you just got to be real careful with it. Um, it'll melt plastic if you're not careful. Um, you don't want to use it on plexiglass and so on and so on. So it's, it's really, I use it primarily for if I get some paint overspray on something, um, uh, I'll use it on that and I use it very sparingly because if you're not careful you can damage your surface. Works great for paint brushes so if let's say I paint something and I miss a little spot or I need to touch up something I'll break out a, a small paint brush and I'll uh, take some of my Krylon and I'll squirt it into the cap and I'll use my paint brush and dip it into the cap and I'll do my touch up of my painted surface and then I'll clean my brush using Goof Off. That reminds me, I don't have any paint brushes up here. Um, so I'm going to grab a paint brush. Um, if you're going to do any type of touch-up work, you're going to want some paint brushes. Um, I have uh, a selection of very small paint brushes for, for doing minor touch-up, like if I miss a little spot 
or if I'm removing the tape and it, you know, something happens and I smudge the, the, the paint or, or something, I may need to touch something up. And that does happen quite often. So I have plenty of small little paint brushes around that are used for exactly that purpose. I also have larger disposable paint brushes. Um, you can see this little metal thing. These aren't for doing small surfaces, but uh, I have some of these around uh, as well. So you'll probably want to have uh, a selection of paint brushes around for, for doing some touch-up work. And the last item on my countertop here is the far item over here. It's an uh, air duster. Um, basically what it is, it's compressed air. And I use this in lieu of a tack rag. Uh, a lot of professional painters will wipe down a surface with a tack rag that gets dust and other um, things that may have landed on your paint surface. I myself, you know, if you feel comfortable using a tack rag, um, great. You know, uh, you, I don't have a tack rag here to, to show you. Actually, I, uh, I do have a tack cloth. I do have a tack cloth here. Um, so I do have these. This is a 3M tack cloth. And what it basically is, is it's a uh, cloth and it's sticky and when you wipe this over a surface it's going to pick up hair dust and, and other things that may have landed on your paint surface um, for for working on on small um, items you know going back to our, our little test item here I wouldn't use a tack cloth on that. Um, I will use the compressed air. And basically, when I'm done sanding, or um, let's say that this, this has been sanded, I've put adhesion promoter on it and I'm ready to paint. So I have my latex gloves on, I'm over my little paint booth, uh, I'm getting ready to paint it. Before I paint it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to squirt it down with the compressed air to blow off any type of contaminants that might be on there, dust or, or anything else that might have landed on it. And in theory, there should be nothing on it because going back to what I mentioned, I'm never touching that surface without the latex gloves on. So there shouldn't be anything on there. But I can tell you that uh, sometimes when I've painted stuff outdoors and I'm, I'm getting ready to paint and I have my surface prepped, uh, my device, my item is ready to go, and I set it down in my little paint area, and you know I turn around and grab a can of paint, and I start painting. All of a sudden, I see some sort of contaminant on the surface that I just painted over. Nine times out of ten, it's some bit of dust that's been kicked up, or it's pollen, or something else from the air that's landed on it, in just you know 20 30 seconds from me setting it down and this normally happens when you're outside if you're trying to paint something that's quasi inside outside like if you're in your garage and the door is open and you're still inside that stuff floats around in the air especially in the summer there's lots of pollen in the air so you gotta you gotta watch that um, if you've ever seen any television shows or um, videos on YouTube where people are painting cars you'll see them dressed in you'll see these people dressed in a full suit and they push the car into a booth that's sealed with doors and it's got fans going uh, and lights and heat lamps that's the purpose behind all of that is to avoid what I'm talking about right here dust hair contaminants pollen uh, bugs uh, landing on on your your item before you paint it so you know we don't have proper paint booths like that at home at least most of us don't so it's uh, you've got to you know take some precautions I've actually had uh, I've been in the process of painting something and I'm painting it and bugs fly in 
and land on it right when I'm painting it. I was painting something and uh, I turned around to set the, the, the paint can down and turned around and sure enough there's a fly sitting right on my freshly painted surface stuck in the paint. It's just those are the hazards of, of trying to paint something when you're outside. So, so I keep the air duster around. Um, obviously the air duster isn't going to help if you get a bug landing in your fresh paint. Uh, so when, when I would paint in a garage with the door open, a lot of times I, I'd keep the door open for um, cleaning my surfaces or doing the adhesion promoter or the wax and grease remover. Um, when I actually went to paint, I'd close the door. That way I could keep bugs from seeing my freshly painted surface and flying in and landing on it. So I believe that covers everything I have on my counter here. Um, there's, I'm sure I've forgotten some items, but this this will get you going and get covers the majority of items that you need to uh, uh, start prepping your your item for paint. So next episode will be episode three, and I'm going to discuss. Um, actually painting something and uh, how to hold it and we'll discuss my, my painting setup as well.